Welcome, everybody. If you guys are new, I'm Robert, and this is my sidekick, Harry Beaver. He will be watching over the wood turning today. I will be turning a platter out of this piece of maple burl. It's roughly 12 inches in diameter and one and a half inches thick. Let me go ahead and put double D from Turnage de Bois in the background, and I'll switch to my overhead camera. I'm going to be mounting this on a worm screw, and I'll be using this little plywood disc because I didn't want to drill too deep. So, Daniel, if you want to run through who's in the chat while I get this mounted. Uh, sure, absolutely, absolutely. Welcome, everybody, especially if it's your first time here. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you know when Robert does his stuff, especially if you like the antics Harry typically pulls. Uh, so far in the chat, active in the chat, we have Brent Beecroft, Duncan, the Curly Turner. I know his wife was also watching because she really wanted to meet Harry. Uh, we also have David Dedman, Lawrence Bugasia. You do it. Richard Phelan, Leaping Lemur, Lemur Woodcrafts. Apologies there. Nick Castle, Mark the Gentleman Wood Turner, Wayne the Wood Turner, Circular Wood by Keith, Scott from the Blue Light Turner's Workshop. And we have um, James from Design and Make. We have Chris Schwind, and I apologize if I mispronounce that. Uh, Rich the Beard 16, Carl Jacobson, Steve Ash. Wyvie's Woodshed, Brian at Hartwood, Turning Shop Dog, Workshop, Dr. Bob, Elliot, Chisky Wood Creations, Martin with Four King Owls, Ronnie Utpjo, and Wayne Willman and Wacky Works Woodshop have all joined. Welcome, everybody, and uh, hope you're all having a great time with the, the Fun Craft Festival. I'm just going to go ahead and kind of get rid of some of this wood on the edge. And then I'll true up the bottom and put a mortise as, long, as well as a little foot. Andy Harris, Gerard the French Turner has joined. Steve Scott, Stuart Ingrui, uh, Woodworm Paul, uh, Bonnie with Adams Artistries has joined as well. And Jamie with JP Woodwork. Silvana, the non-crafting crafter, William Rose Creates, Neil Gould has joined, and Terry with TJ Turning. So lots of people are jumping in. Welcome, everybody. Make sure and mash that thumbs up if you like what Hodge does throughout the show. And Rub-A-Dub-Wood has also joined, and Andy Green, Colin Izzard, Dara Kula, Colin, Kulan, apologies, Seth with Brick House has joined also. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for popping along. For those of you who are just joining up, Hodge has a piece of maple that uh, has some burl figuring in it, and he's going to turn a nice little platter. So I've got the base fairly flat, at least at the center point. Now I'm going to go ahead and use my calipers to mark a mortise want to get, get it fairly small so it fits the jaws while they're open i'll use a pencil to just highlight that so you guys can see it a little better jpn company and jake thompson and andy best have all joined welcome peter corcoran has joined Huey Lion's Heart has joined. Katie the Cornish Maid has joined as well. Archie Monty has joined. So welcome everybody. And then there's Joe Senior as well. Welcome, welcome. Welcome everybody. So I'm gonna put a little bit of a foot, roughly about an inch wide from where the mortise is. And then I'm just gonna have a gentle OG shape. CJ's Hobbies has joined, and he has a question. Since his lathe tool rest has a hole in it, why is it there? Uh, I don't really know. I think it might have to do something to do with the uh, casting process. At least that's what I've heard before. Louis the Klondike Craftsman has joined. Hi, Louis. Hello, Louis.
So what's the diameter of this piece, Hodge? This was about 12 inches in diameter. Misfit74 has joined. Hello. Welcome, Misfit. I'm going to move the tool rest and just make the outside round. If you can see, there's a bit of a flat spot here. I want to know where my rim will end up being before I get too far into shaping it. Hugh with Wouldn't It Be Nice and Leroy 500 have all joined, so welcome everybody. You Do It has just asked a question. Has anyone ever had a turning tool go flying at them? Uh, I can tell you I was using my parting tool and it snapped off at the handle and that's probably the scariest moment I've ever had on my lathe. How about you, Hodge? No, I've never had a tool fly off. I've had bark fly off. Uh, can't remember the last time I had like a whole piece of wood fly off. It's been a while. Uh, Rich the Beard X16 asks, did I miss what type of wood? Yeah, it's a piece of maple uh, with some burl figuring in it. Scott has the most important question so far. Question, with this international fame, is Harry getting a special dinner? Uh, I don't think so. He's probably just going to want Taco Bell again. Ah, uh, so unoriginal. Barry Fisher with BF Turning has joined. Hi, Barry. Welcome. Welcome, Barry. Lewis says that he believes that the holes in the case tool rests are to prevent both sides from breaking if there's a crack. So it stops the crack in the center rather than breaking all the way through. I mean, the holes way over here. So I don't know. I have no idea. I've heard other people ask the same thing before. Mark, the gentleman woodturner, has also snapped a skew while turning. Stuart had a blank split apart and smashed the motor off the lathe. That's not pleasant. Wayne, Bigfoot Woodcraft, has joined and says, uh, I have had a tool fly at me when I questioned why um, his wife was turning a particular way. Andy Harris had a 3 8 inch bull gal sna gouge snap right after a catch and fly across the room. The, wow, that's scary. Now, normally I would take away the tool rest or the tailstock, but when I was tightening this on the worm screw, it seemed a little loose, like the hole I drilled was too big. The threads weren't really grabbing, so I don't really want to take the tailstock away right now. Barry Chitty has joined. Greetings. Pete from Twisted Trees says that the hole in the tool rest is to hang it from a wire and dip it in the paint. That would make sense. Rich the Beard had a carbide tip shatter once, hitting his phone and smashing the screen. So there's a little bit of a natural edge here that I'm trying to get rid of. I might have to make the diameter a little smaller because otherwise the rim will be really thin. I'm going to go ahead and define the foot more with my point tool. Misfit said they had a tool bounce and fly up while still in their hand and hit, it, hit their face shield. Artifier Glass Blowing has joined. Welcome. Welcome, guys. I'm really looking forward to y'all's demo. It was really good last time. Yeah, I was going to say they're coming up just after, just a little bit later on down the road with uh, some glass blowing, huh? Yeah, I know Jake Thompson is next, a fellow Texan. Mark at the Garden Workshop has joined. Welcome. Yeah, Artifier glass blowing is at 4 p.m. Eastern time, so that would be in two hours' time. Mm -hmm. 
So I know that you said this had some burling in it, Hodge. Is it cut better or worse than other maple you've turned? Or what are your what's your uh, opinion on it? I haven't really turned too much maple. There's definitely some tear out just because of the wild grain. I mean, the whole thing's a burl, basically. You can see the eyes here and some compression or waviness here. But yeah, it's, I'm getting a bad cut. And it's also because I can't do a push cut. But uh, let me try and... I'm going to go ahead and try and take the tail stock off. Hopefully this doesn't end in disaster. Right, that would be tight. rough. Seems tighter now, so. And Douglas Mungham is joined. Hi, Douglas. Welcome, Douglas. Misfit said the Cholule glass exhibit in Tacoma a few years back was really cool. My wife and I actually saw a Cholule visit uh, in North Carolina, Charlotte, um, uh, two or three years ago. I don't remember when. Right in there. I'm going to go ahead and form that mortise now. So what is everybody thinking so far today about the uh, Virtual Craft Festival? We've had a lot of phenomenal people doing some work. What's everybody's opinions? Quentin with Deadwood Casting has joined. Hi, Quentin. Welcome, Quentin. Douglas, the wood is a piece of maple with some uh, burling in it. Lewis asked how uh, Texas is doing recovering from the cold snap. Uh, as far as I know, most stuff is back to being normal. I think there might still be some like plumbing supply shortages. But other than that, I think everything's good. I'm going to go ahead and put the dovetail in that mortise. And Florida Bearded Woodworker has joined. Greetings, Brian. CJ's Hobby has joined also. John Skelfo has joined. Everybody is saying they're having a great time with this uh, virtual craft festival. So that is awesome to hear. I know there's a lot of phenomenal makers out there that really really put their heart and soul into their craft. And I know I've learned a lot from watching every one of them. I'm just trying to get rid of that little point from the tail center. And then make it a little convex. I think e the right one. Ian with IDR turn wood turning is joined. All right, clean up the inside corner. That feels good. A little bit more, actually. Now I'll try to take some cleaner cuts on the surface to get a better finish. And Ruby Claire has joined. Hi, Ruby. Welcome, Ruby. Misfit is really ex excited to see how, well, curious, but I turn that as excited too, because it always is interesting to learn new things, but um, curious to see how the, how the platter is going to be hollowed out and flattened versus a bowl. So that'll be interesting to see. Chris Spinning Wood Dodger and John with Jigsy Shed have joined. Greetings, everybody. Ben Jammin has joined as well. Might be getting a little bit of vibration. Got 106 people watching you right now, Hodge, with uh, 50 thumbs up. So if you like what you're seeing from Hodge or in, and you like Harry's new outfit, definitely mash that thumbs up. Thank all you guys for joining. All right, let's see. It's a little bit better, but there's still some lines. I'm going to use a different tool, a freshly sharpened one. Now, 
Additionally, for those of you who like what Robert and Harry do, if you want them to stay awake longer and be able to make more awesome things and projects, uh, up at the top in a pinned comment is where you can buy Hodge a coffee if you would like to. The more coffee you buy for him, the longer he stays awake and the more projects he can turn. I have been up since uh, Steve's demo this morning. I wasn't able to make JP's since that's at 4 a.m. Whitehall Pottery asks an important question, Hodge. Uh, on route, on route to Woodcraft for a block plane for Ben. Anybody need anything? No, I think I'm good. Well, I could use a dust collection system if you want to grab me one. Katie, if you, if you buy him a, <laughs> she asks, but what if it's decaf? Well, if you buy him the coffee and he picks the decaf, then that's on him. Got a bunch of light shavings here. All right. I think I'll, good as far as that goes. I'm going to make the foot uh, slanted inward so that it rests at the corner and also get it rid of a bit of tear out. I was going to say, it seemed like you were getting a little bit better cut that last pass. Yeah, I mean, it's a sharp tool, so that always helps. I don't turn much dry wood, so it's kind of a thing for me to get used to. I'm going to have to shorten the, uh, the diameter to get rid of that flat spot by probably about an eighth of an inch, maybe. See if that got rid of it. Still a little bit to go. One more pass. Not the dreaded one more pass statement. Barry's in the shed has joined. Greetings, Barry. Welcome, Barry. All right, at this stage, I'll thin the rim out a little bit more, define the OG a little more, and then I'll do some sanding. Braxton Worthlin is in, says, never one more, always another. Yeah, that's a good point. I know that when certain people always say one more pass, it ends up Funnelville. Virtual Craft Festival has joined. Welcome. We are doing an awesome festival today, Mr. Festival. Hampton's Wood Turning has joined also. Good afternoon, everybody. All right, yeah. blend in this one tool mark. Yeah, I was just asking everybody a little bit ago that uh, what everybody thought of it, and everybody has said that they were having a great time and seeing a lot of amazing, amazing work from everybody. So, always love a good festival where we can see amazing people create amazing things. No, I'm going to go ahead and put on my dust mask for the sanding portion of this. I haven't, I just bought a dust collector the other day, but I haven't got everything hooked up yet. So I'm going to go ahead and start with a hundred and actually I'm going to do 80 grit real quick. 
sounds like Darth Vader has joined us for the evening of sanding. I'm going to put the link out to the virtualcrafty.com. Just, I'm sure all of you know that, but uh, just want to keep reiterating that you can easily navigate to that website and be able to watch everybody at the time. And the Wood Dude has joined. Yeah, Wood Dude, there are lots of uh, demos and live streams. They are the Virtual Crafty that we are part of here with HodgePodge Woodworks is uh, just one of a plethora, maybe even two plethora, that are occurring today back to back. I'm going to go ahead and change grips. Wayne the wood turner says he wants one of those drills, Hodge. He's got drilly. I don't know why he, I hope drilly doesn't hear that. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I hope he's not in his shed. He might hurt Drilly's feelings. Hugh has to step out. Uh, something called dinner that is important. I hope it's a good one for you. I'm going to take off the little disc and sand near the foot. I'm just going to finish this with an oil finish so that way if I need to do any more sanding I can do a wet sanding in case I run out of time. Hodge, you said that Jake Thompson is next, correct? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, he's next. Perfect. I'm going to put a link out to his channel just in case anybody's not following the Virtually Crafty website uh, for everything. But there's a link to Jake's channel. He will be on next. And Jake always does some amazing projects as well. Wayne did say that he's in the house, so Drilly can't hear. Good, because we definitely don't want Drilly having hurt feelings. Yeah, I'd be worried. He knows where you live or where you sleep. I'll go ahead and use this to be my last grit, and then I'll probably wet sand with the oil finish with 400. So Mark at the Good Garden Workshop says that Harry's looking really good. Harry's looking good in his new robe. Um, so yeah, he's pretty happy to be on camera. I know that. And he he's working through some of his camera shyness. So we're hoping, fingers crossed, that one of these days he might actually start talking some during the lives if he gets over his stage fright that he has. Yeah. I think he might be getting a little over past it, or I think he might just start drinking before the lives. A little, you know, liquid courage. So I'll go ahead and put this on the mortise. 
try not to do too hard so there's no marks on it. Make sure that's true. It looks pretty good to me. And put on my face shield. So Ruby asked Jake what he was doing today. And Jake says, I'm making three sets of blanks with a new internet connection. Uh, I figured you'd use resin instead of the internet. But I'm bum. Dale with Maple Tree Studios has joined. Hi, Dale. He's going to flatten off the front. Tommy's workshop has joined. Says hi, Hodge. Welcome, Tommy. Yeah, I started getting interested in resin um, after watching some of Jake Thompson's videos. So if you if you are interested in resin projects, he does a lot of those. He has a just as a wealth of information about uh, casting and stabilizing and the setups and some of the and com even comparisons of some of the different resins out there. So definitely check his channel out if you're interested in resins or just want to learn more about them. So I'm just trying to take a look at the figure in the wood to determine how wide of a rim I want to make it. I think I'm probably going to go about two inches or so. I'll go ahead and put a mark with the pencil where I'm thinking I'm going to do it. Rob CP has just joined. Hi, Rob CP. And I want to have kind of a curved rim so it feels good in the hand. Adam with I Love Word Turning has joined. Greetings, Adam. Welcome. Misfit says that uh, trying to find a good scale is a real pita. And I agree. It's sometimes it's quite cumbersome to find a good scale. Sometimes it's just kind of hit or miss for me, at least, as to, oh, that looks good. Oh, oh wait, that looks better. Or, ooh, that doesn't look good at all. I better start over. I'm going to round over this outside rim edge first before I get too far along. Colin King has joined. Hi, Colin. Welcome. And for those of you who have not subscribed to Hodge's channel, um, Hodge does weekly videos. He has premieres that, that come out on Sundays at 12 o'clock Central Time, noon. Um, so live premieres of each one of his weekly videos. We always get on there and have a lot of fun chat during those. So uh, subscribe and make sure that you hit that bell notification so you get notified when he and Harry make their appearances each week. Now with this being a burl, the grain is kind of all over the place. So the cutting directions doesn't really... You kind of have to stop and check to see which way the grain's going when you're doing the cut. Douglas Mungham asks, at what point do I stop? He's asking me. Well, sometimes I stop about five or six cuts too late. As I'm sure we all have at, at, at at least one time or another. And Katie, the Cornish maid, says she has to leave. Thanks for coming by, Katie. 
See you later, Katie. Just blending in the curve right now. See what the grain looks like. That is really nice figuring, in my opinion. I'll go ahead and start taking away some of the waste wood in the middle. switch to a different gouge just so I don't dull that one too much. I know a couple of weeks ago, I guess maybe last week you were starting out working with the 4040 grind. Are you still have you still been practicing with that or are you just kind uh, of where are I you with that? I'm still practicing with it. I hollowed out one or roughed out one bowl already, but I haven't done too much with it this week. I used it a little bit in the video that I have coming out tomorrow. Now, I know that, I mean, just from watching you, of course, but for people who haven't watched you or seen a lot of your stuff, when you're doing these platters, you use the spacers in there with your worm screw uh, to make it so it, of course, doesn't go all the way through. How do you gauge what uh, size of a spacer that you use to for the worm screw that you still think is going to be safe enough? Uh, I mean, with this one, I probably had a hole that was three-eighths of an inch deep. I've done it before where we only have a quarter of an inch of worm screw engagement, and I've, it's, I've never had one come off. I know that I don't typically have great luck with worm screws, so I don't use them. I need to practice some more. The tool seems kind of dull as well. Maybe there's some weird dirt in this burl or something. Still plenty of meat left. Do you find yourself using calipers more than your hand to measure thickness or is it the other way around for you personally? I mean, I pretty much use my hands until I get to a point where I think it's questionable, but I, I still have at least half of an inch right here. So I'm trying to decide if I want to leave kind of a, not a bead, but like a V groove here at the top. I guess I can put it on and if I don't like it, I can take it off. Or if I just wanted a smooth transition. Let's see.
So does anybody have any fun projects that they're working on over the next week or two that they're looking forward to? I know Hodges spent a lot of time prepping for this and some other stuff. Mark Stratton has just joined. Hi, Mark. But what kind of projects are people working on? Scott Hampton says it's looking great so far. Mark, the gentleman woodturner, has three cake stands to do this week. Doug Miller is thinking about doing a second water project. Rob CP is working on the water challenge piece. Stuart Farini has joined. Hi, Stuart. Welcome, Stuart. Terry with TJ Turning has a pencil pot commission and do a large bowl and a cake stand. I'm getting a little vibration out here on the right, so I'm just going to use my fingers behind it to support it a little bit. Donovan Bailey uh, has joined and asks, I've been dragging my feet to get into it personally, but do you do or intend to do any resin turning? I'm assuming he's asking you, Hodge, uh, if you do or intend to do any, any resin well, turning. Maybe. I mean, I have some resin that I actually won from uh, Ken Moon at Moon Pie Studios during his last uh, virtual crafty event. So I'll do some resin, but... I'm not going to go head over heels for it. Looks like a lot of fun projects going on. Mark, uh, the garden workshop's doing a hollow form, probably birch. Artifier glass blowing is filling orders for glass galleries that are reopening after COVID shutdowns. That is great. Douglas Mungham has a 10 by 10 by 10 block of you and isn't sure quite what to do with it. Dale with Maple Tree Studios is doing a four-panel version of Stormtrooper Rising and a Marilyn Monroe commission. Malcolm Douglas is halfway through another 2,500-piece segmented bowl. I am working on a very large hybrid piece uh, that I have uh, a partnership on with this to, to do the project with Total Boat. So they sent me some resin to do this project. So... That is sitting on the lathe right now, waiting for me to get back to it once uh, once we're done with Hodge here. A couple of weeks ago, I turned a colored pencil and resin pencil holder as a result of a lost bet. And big thank you to Quentin over at Deadwood Casting and Turning for making that blank for me. Mark Stratton has just finished a resin and pencil bowl. Pete from Twisted Tree says, spent an hour this morning turning plastic, then 52 hours of cleaning up. So this afternoon, I'm working on a bowl with a split right through it, which is slow going, but looking good. Sounds like fun, Pete. Let me check the thickness. I think it's more like a quarter of an inch down here at the base now. Adams Artistries asked who I lose that bet with. Some weird lady out of Florida named Bonnie. She just she just keeps going on and on and on. She just started a channel though, so that'll teach her. JPN Company is working on a nested set of cherry barrel bowls. Mark's seeing his wood guy tomorrow to pick up some more blanks. Jixi's got to finish off his water challenge and another project on the lead, on the lathe. So fun times. Mike Doyle has just joined. Greetings, Mike. Welcome. Welcome, Mike. I'm going to switch back to my 
Henry Taylor gouge. Let's put a little sharper, I hope. Pop the little thingy if Mark's watching. Wayne the Woodturner is redoing the piece from this afternoon that he since he messed up the paint. Zed the Zombie Woodturner has joined. Welcome. Welcome, Zed. Seth is uh, says the epoxy coating on the inside of his water challenge piece should be fully cured tomorrow, so he can finally video the ending. All right. Uh, let me. I think I can fit calipers inside of the hole. I saw this. I think I think I saw Mike Mahoney or Glenn Lucas do this. I can't remember, but they were able to. No, it's not going to fit. They had these fancy calipers that he could fit inside the mortise. They're inside the chuck jaws and then measure the mortise at the bottom. But those were a little too big, but there's still a little bit of space. I'm going to sharpen my tool real quick. While you're doing that, Mark says, ha ha ha, hodge, hodge, you're funny. And then I roll. <laughs> I just want to get one finished cut so I can spend less time sanding. Brian says that he has not started his water challenge piece. Yes, you have time because you are that good, Brian. Especially when you danced a jig after your project this morning. Well done, sir. Well done. All right. So I'm going to or finish off this rim a little bit with a sheer cut. Wayne said that he was carrying his piece into the house for some photos and tipped it. Mm. Sounds like zombie woodturner has been doing some burning. He says, I smell of scorched pine. Scott Tegas joins us. Hi, Hodge. Welcome, Scott. And Mark, you, you did have to bully Brian to dance, but you promised me that it would happen, and it did. So kudos to Mark the Gentleman Woodturner for getting Brian to dance today. Fred Gilliver just joined, says, hi, sorry he's late, just had dinner. Welcome, Fred. Tommy's finishing up his water challenge, hoping to have it done by Wednesday. I know your water challenge piece is premiering tomorrow at noon central time. And then I'll have my premiere immediately following that at 1230 central time. And then Adam's Artistries is a new channel that has joined the Water Challenges, and she will be premiering right after mine at 1 o'clock Central Time. A Mark at the Garden. Of, Go ahead. A little bit of a ridge here that I'm going to try to blend in. Mark at the Garden Workshop says, what do you mean, Brian can sing and dance? I didn't hear him sing this morning, but he definitely did dance. Pencil. I can feel a bit of a groove right in there. And then the middle's a little high. I think I'll call that 
good and then I'll start sanding here. I really like that graining. Yeah, I bought this from the guy on Instagram, Worldwide Burls, quite a while ago, but I've just been sitting around waiting for the proper time to turn it. Turn the speed down to around 500. Carl Jacobson says, it is beautiful. Thank you, Carl. W. Bradburn says, quite nice figure in that wood. Yeah, it's a really nice burling effect throughout that piece of maple. Okay, do a little hand sanding around the rim. Sebastian Ausenhofer has joined. Hi, Sebastian. Welcome. Welcome, and, Sebastian. And once again, everybody, if you have not subscribed to HodgePodge, um, please feel free to do so and smash that subscribe button as well as the bell notification to get notifications when uh, he uploads videos. He does a premiere every Sunday at 12 p.m. Central Time and usually does lives on Saturday mornings at 8 a.m. Central Time. So he and Harry have a lot of fun on the channel and uh, definitely work to keep people entertained. Bit of tear out here. Brian at Heartwood Turning says, waiting for the sanding sealer to see this one pop. I'm going to use a oil finish on this, so no sanding sealer. That's okay. It'll still pop when you do that. Yep. Jigsy's got to head off to bed. I head off again. So thanks for coming by, John. See you later, John. Probably going to have to do a little bit of a better job sanding once my live is over. I think there's some tear out that's left, but I want to get you guys a shot with the oil at least on there. Put this back on the yeah, I was going to say, just so you knew, you were right about 10 minutes to go for to be able to get it to pop once for everybody. Yeah. We don't want to interfere with Jake's live. So once again, if you are not following the virtuallycrafty.com website with everything going from channel to channel, here is a link to Jake Thompson's channel. He is up next and is going to be, according to his chat earlier, is going to be making some blanks. All right. So last grip. And hopefully this isn't too loud. I'm going to use my air compressor to blow off some of the air. Nope, not too bad. All right. And the reason I put a mortise on this is just so I could put it back on the lathe in case I needed to do any kind of work because I didn't really want to make a practice piece out of a piece of burl. So let me go to the overhead camera 
and get. I'll just be using. Uh, you might focus it. All right. I'll probably lower it down to get a better, bigger, closer view as well. Okay. Sebastian asks who the manufacturer is of that sanding tool. Uh, I bought it from Wo Wood Turners Worldwide, but uh, Kling Spore sells basically the exact same one, except it's black. Uh, there's multiple. I think it's kind of like the. I guess there's an Axminster lathe and the Harbor Freight lathe that are basically the same manufacturer, just different. Uh, people buy it and put their sticker on it, basically. I'm just using my hand to apply the oil. It's food safe. Put one kind of heavy coat in and let it sink in. And then... And of course, I immediately think Silence of the Lambs. It rubs the lotion on its skin. Or else it gets the hose again. Exactly. So that is beautiful. Really cool eyes there. And then some ripple on the other side. I'm going to avoid putting oil inside the mortise because I'll later sign that area. So I'll try to keep any oil out of that spot. And you don't forget to mash those thumbs up if you're watching and you like what Hodge and Harry do. And then once again, just in case anybody wants to make Hodge work longer, you can always buy him a cup of coffee at the link at the top. Love Angel has joined. Hello, Donna. Welcome, Donna. So there we are. Everybody One. is loving the piece. Finished. Um, let Mark wants to know if I can link the sander. Let me see if I can find that for you, Mark. Grab a paper towel, just kind of take off the leftover foil. Where did you say you got that Hodge Woodworkers? Uh, world. Oh, the sander. The sander, yeah. Wood Turners Wonder. They are known for their CBN wheels, but they also have this little sanding guy there. Okay. I know I've looked it up a long time ago, so. So it's fairly shallow. I'm not completely happy with the outside curve. I should have had more of an OG shape, but I suppose I could try to fix that later. Here is the link to that specific sander. Yeah, everybody is really liking what they're seeing. That is beautiful. Uh, thank you, guys. Let me go ahead and switch cameras. Maybe this one will give a better... Nah. You might raise that other camera up. Yeah. It's not lighting on that side of the shop, so... Let's see if this one's any better. That way you can see Harry yeah, That's well. beautiful, yeah. Harry likes showing off his wood. Yeah. Kind of like the figure on the bottom side better. All this stuff's kind of crazy. Maybe not. But anyways, guys, I'll uh, give you guys a little bit of time off to go use the restroom or get some, uh, I guess, dinner in the UK or lunch here in the States, maybe. Health breaks are important from time to time. But uh, thank you guys for joining. And like, like Daniel said, if you guys want to see more, I do lives every Saturday at around 8 a.m. And I have a premiere every Sunday at noon central time. Looks like I lost my cap to my oil. I'll have to find that later. But thank all you guys for joining. Harry says goodbye. And be sure to check out the other people that are still to come. I mean, Jake Thompson's next. I know we have the art blowing art, the glass blowing group uh, coming up here in a little bit. Carl, I think is ending the night over with Carl Jacobs, uh, Carl Jacobson's channel. So check everybody out and support them and make sure to subscribe and not get notified when everybody else is uh, doing their amazing work. So keep it up. Yeah. And for any of you guys that haven't seen Jake Thompson's uh, workshop, Prepare to get a little envious. 
<laughs> so uh, it's bigger it's, than my house, I think. It, yeah, it's a little big. <laughs> so all right, I'm go ahead and end it. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one. Bye, guys. <laughs>